Oh, hey, welcome back, Breakfast Club. We are in the opening chapters of our Wise Investment series, exploring the issues the most followers of Jesus often don't think they have a problem with. Money. Very few followers of Jesus consider themselves to have money problems, that of being too greedy or too purchase happy. For this and so many other reasons, we are going to stop and see what God has to say about this topic. In these first two weeks, we are exploring some basic framework that will help us set the stage for the rest of this series. We start this week with a classic passage in the book of James, written by Jesus' half-brother. He said, Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Often when the New Testament speaks of poverty, it is a spiritual poverty that is being addressed. But it is clear in the context of this chapter, and I'd encourage you to read the whole thing on your own, that James is addressing actual material poverty. He makes a strange observation. He flips the script and says that the materially poor are often the most spiritually rich. But the materially rich are often spiritually poor. We have evidence in this text that the rich in the early church were actually taking the poor, their brothers and sisters in Christ, who owed them money to court so they could force a debt repayment. What a disgrace. James is saying monetary squabbles are family matters and should be handled within the family as much as possible for the sake of the name of Jesus. James is observing something we looked at briefly last week, which is that the rich tend to have the most resistance to the gospel. The gospel starts with need, that we are broken, sinful, unable to save ourselves, unable to control our destiny. It is the rich, James is saying, who have the hardest time accepting that. Our riches create a delusion that we have no need, that we are self-sufficient, and worse, that we already have God's approval because we are rich. The poor, on the other hand, have no such delusions about being in control of their lives or of having God's approved uh, approval automatically. They recognize their own powerlessness, and as a result, are far more willing to embrace that they have a need that they cannot address themselves. As historian Philip Jenkins observed in his book, God Forsaken, he said, Christianity is flourishing flourishing wonderfully among the poor and persecuted, while it atrophies among the rich and secure. There is always a temptation to assume that those with money in the church are cut above anyone else, the most worthy of being on the board or in leadership or to have a voice in meetings while the poor can be ignored. James' words are a good reminder that the poor are often richer in a sense than the rest. The beauty of the gospel message is often welcomed in the hearts of the poor more than those with money. Many times it is the poor with the greatest wisdom, the most robust faith, the deepest discernment, the most weathered experience, and the profoundest knowledge. James is telling us to look around to the poor among us because they are often far richer than we think. Let's pray. Our Father, it is our sinful natures that want to favor the rich over the poor. Thank you for these words of correction that remind us to honor the poor and to hold them in high regard along with everyone else. May you teach us to love and cherish others in the church, regardless of whether they are dressed in finely pressed suits or wrinkled, unwashed rags. Thank you that all in the church are beautiful to you and cherished by you. Amen. All right, Breakfast Club, your question to start this week is, what stories do you often make up in your head about those who have less than you.
Tomorrow, we look at associating with the poor, and I hope to see you then. Thanks for joining us today. Take care, everyone.